Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lauren and welcome to Plants and Teens. In today's video, we're gonna be talking all about pawn. It's gonna be about the basics, back pawn 101, back to the basics. What is pawn? What is he, what do you use it for? How does it work? All that good stuff. And then we're gonna also talk about my experience with pawn. I'll show you some plants that I have in pawn um, and some you know recommendations or tips, things that I've learned along the way that I would like to share that I kind of wish I knew before I started using pawn. And there was one other thing I wanted to talk about. I can't remember, but it'll come up in this video. So if that's something you're interested in, keep on watching. So today we're gonna be talking everything pawn from the very beginning of what is pawn, pawn 101 basically, up to what has been my experience, what are my tips and tricks about it, down all the way to kind of like my review of showing you how some plants are doing that are in pawn. And I wanna thank my subscriber that requested this video. I really appreciate it. I always appreciate suggestions and recommendations on what you guys want to see. So thank you for making the request and let's get into it. So I'm gonna be using um, um, the Choose of Pawns official website to kind of give you an idea of the properties of Pawn. And then I'm also going to refer to another Etsy seller that I use, their um, explanation of Pawn as well. But basically, Pawn is a soil substitute. So you can use it instead of using soil to grow your plants in. And it is made up of a few different things. So, Pawn, the Choose a Pawn brand, Pawn, <laughs> it's going to be hard to say. <laughs> I'm going to be saying pawn a lot. Sorry. Lechuza's substrate, let's go with that one, is made up of zeolite, pumice, lava, German lava, and fertilizer, and slow-release fertilizer. So that's what Lechuza brand substrate is made up of. Now, it's very, it's not a secret. So what a lot of people have done, they make their own pond substrate. They do their research on whatever properties they think are helpful for plants, similar to this here, and they make the same type of substrate. Uh, that's with this seller here, Little Emerald Thumb, that I've referred to in the past that I've used their pond, which I do like so far. Um, they have the same thing. So on theirs, it says that their pond cons consists of pumice, lava, and calcinite clay and now zebra granite. It used to have zeolite in it, but she put a note that says she wasn't able to get zeolite anymore. So she switched it out for zebra granite. I couldn't really find if that the purpose was the same for zebra granite. I would assume that if she swapped it, it's because they had similar properties. Um, but I couldn't find the research myself to see what is the properties of zebra granite for plants. I just kept coming up with countertops and stuff like that. So. Anyways, that's what is in her um pot. Hi everybody, editing Lauren here. Um, I decided to reach out to Erin while I was doing the editing of this video just to ask her um, what is the purpose of the zebra granite so you guys can have the information yourself. And she basically said, as you can see from her response here, that it's more so for stability or the weight of the substrate. And without it, it would be super light and it wouldn't provide enough stability to a plant as it grows and becomes more and more top heavy. So it's not... Um, like zeolite in a sense where it helps be balance the pH as you can see in the previous little pop-up note I put about zeolite this is purely for the weight and stability of the plant so um, I assume that you know if she could still get zeolite you know in her area she would have it in her substrate but for whatever reason it's not available in her area so she doesn't have it anymore but yeah back to the regularly scheduled program Pond. But as you can see, it's very similar. Um, she has the added clay, though. And that's not in Lachuza Pond's pond. Oh, my God. I got to figure out a different word. It's not in Lachuza's substrate. <laughs> so you can tweak your substrate to be whatever you want it to be if you're not sure you want to make the leap and purchase, you know, someone else's substrate. Because Lachuza's is not cheap. And neither is Little Green Emerald Thumbs. Little Emerald Thumbs, I should say. But I do like both of them. And for me, I choose to purchase the substrate rather than make my own because I really don't have the time or the space to store the different components to make and mix like I just like to pour and go so that's why I purchased it but it can be a bit of a cost up front now to go more into in depth into the properties of pond and why it's really good why it works really well I should say for plants is because a lot of times with 
plants and their root growth, they need not just water and nutrients, they also need air. So the whole thing with pond or a soil-free substrate is battling that um, challenge of having enough airflow. That's why they're always saying, make your chunky, airy mix, you know, so you don't want your soil to be condensed because when it's condensed like that or it's too um, dense when it gets wet, it traps, it, it, it traps out oxygen and when the plant's roots are not able to get oxygen, that moist environment with no oxygen just is a breeding ground for bacteria, which creates root rot. So that is why people generally, not always, but generally see less root rot with pond substrates or um, LECA, things like that, because there's more of this guaranteed oxygen airflow because the particles are larger than that of soil. So just like with soil, um, pond has the ability to take up water and hold water with capillary action, and then the roots that are in contact with that um, substrate, just like soil, can absorb the water that it needs. Some other things that Lechuza Pond, the claims that they make for their product is that it's a natural odor, odor absorber and that it also blocks fungi that can attack the roots. So they say that it's better uh, for people who suffer from allergies, which I do feel like that's the case. And of course, the big thing which I really love is that you're less likely to have pests. It doesn't eliminate it because I have seen a fly or two, you know, or something crawling on my pond one time, but it's very minimal. Like it's very, very minimal because there's not, it's an inorganic, um, substrate you know it's not organic so life cannot be uh, formed in pond you know bugs and bacteria cannot form in pond so it does it does really uh, reduce significantly pest issues which is what was my major catalyst for wanting to switch to pond so the last thing that pond specifically lechuza ponds um, substrate contains is a slow release fertilizer which is great for those who like a set it and forget it type of feed system for their plants it's already in there you really don't have to replace it for a while um, I would say they don't say specifically but just like all slow release fertilizers the amount of length of time it lasts varies so if I was to only use Lechuza Pond with no plant food no liquid dirt no nothing I probably would put a little more um slow release fertilizer in there say after six to eight months then i would say you know this the next summer came around i'm gonna add some more slow release fertilizer that's what i would do if i was only using um the slow release fertilizer in pond because it is in there but it's not going to last forever so that's the basics of what pond consists of and how it works. Um, as mentioned, you can choose or choose not to as your own liquid fertilizer, but you do not have to. If you're not purchasing Lechuza brand substrate, you just would need to look at that seller's um, co components of their substrate and see if you need to add that in yourself or not. So now on to the different ways that you can use pond. Just like soil, you can use it any way. You can use it to propagate, you can use it to just plant your plants in, you can use it just as you would soil. There's really not much that you can do, that you can't do with pond. Um, I have found that I've never, have I? Let me not lie to y'all. <laughs> I don't think I've ever lost a plant like completely in pond. I've lost a leaf, but not the whole node. So I'll get into why that happened and when I talk about the actual plants and everything. But yeah, I, I've never had death of plant in pond. But of course it's possible. You know, I'm not gonna say that it's not possible. Of course it's possible. For me, it's been minimal to none. I'm gonna say minimal because I don't wanna lie to y'all and say that I've never and I just can't remember. So let's just say it's minimal. So I'm gonna show you guys the pond that I have right now. This is the one here from Little Emerald Thumb. This actually has some Lechuza pond in it because you can reuse it. Um, I unpotted something for whatever reason, I don't remember why. Oh, I ended up putting it in perlite. I unpotted something and it was with Lechuza Pond. So you can see the Lechuza Pond is the more tan one up here and the more reddish brown one here is the one from Little Emerald Thumb. And what I have noticed, the main difference between these two brands, um, they both work fine for me. I've had no issues with them. If you can see it here, the particles for the Little Emerald is a little smaller, just slightly, just a little slightly smaller than the um, Lechuza, which 
it doesn't really matter but that's just something I noticed and one thing that did matter to me that I did like um, you don't have to rinse your pond when you first get it but I like to rinse the pond because it it has a lot of dust and clay that could build up at the bottom and I don't know how if that's a problem you know for the plant or not so I rinse the pond first before I use it and it takes a little bit it takes a little bit to really rinse the lechuza paran substrate thoroughly but with little emerald thumb i found that once i rinsed it like it was pretty quick like i didn't have to sit there rinsing rinsing keep seeing dust coming out like it was rinsed the dust came out it was done <laughs> like, so i was like oh i like that <laughs> so it's not cheap though i'm not gonna lie i'm gonna put it on the screen how much this 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 little bag <laughs> how much this little bag was um and that's my fault because this is a dry gallon and in my mind i didn't know and i i'm maybe i'm dumb i didn't know there was such a thing as a dry gallon and not dry gallon so when i was like doing the calculations of okay how much because the pond is uh lechuza brand i should say is sells in liters so now i gotta do the conversions liters per gallon blah, blah, blah. so i'm thinking that i'm oh okay it's gonna be a better deal for me to get little emerald thumbs one because i get more and then i got it and i was like this is not more this is less <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, um, it's not cheap. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's not cheap. So I only use it for my small plants. That's what I use it for. I don't now at this time use it for propagations. I started to use it first for propagations because I'm like, this is great. I can put it in this substrate to propagate. And once it becomes established, it's established and it can just stay in there. I don't have to move it, which you can do. But in my experience, what I did that I should not have done is I didn't keep the pond moist enough. So for example, I thought I brought all my examples up here, but I didn't. Let me get another one. So I don't have any more propagations in pond, but this little syngonium here is a plant that I put in pond at the same time that I did those other propagations. And what I found, oh look, it has a nice little root over there. It's doing good. Um, what I found that this pond, it dries out quickly, like, and it dries all the way out. So what I was doing is like this. I had a lot of um, these kind of plastic sleeves. They were nice and cheap from Amazon. I just had these little trays here. I just filled the reservoir and set it in water. When I watered it, I just put, added water to the reservoir. But for propagations that need to stay moist, you want to add the water to the substrate, not just the... Um, not just the tray because what was happening was this was completely drying out and yes the pond was sucking it up but maybe not at a rate or at enough it wasn't enough moisture for a um what am i trying to say for a propagation <laughs> it's fine for a plant but it wasn't fine for a propagation so if you're going to use pond for propagations i just recommend that you water the substrate all the way through not just the tray so that's that but this is doing pretty good this was um in soil at first it had a couple leaves it wasn't really doing anything i transferred it over because the roots was not, wasn't really doing anything and here it is yeah it's doing much better it has new roots another leaf it's doing good so that's one example so i'm going to show you some different examples of situations that i have pawn in and kind of give you a little backstory so so that hopefully i'll be able to pull out some tips and tricks for you guys through these examples so this black velvet is a example of a soil transition to pawn and i didn't do anything this leaf is beautiful oh my gosh it got bigger just take a minute to look at this leaf just take a minute oh my goodness why is this leaf so beautiful look at how look at this tip though how cute that is this little tail wow this is this okay <laughs> so these are two separate plants if you can see of black velvet these are two separate plants and i got one i ordered one online and when i was in the store a day a few days later waiting for that to come in the mail i saw another one so i got a second one of course just in case something happens to the one in the mail <laughs> so i had two black velvets and for a while i wasn't really i loved them at first but i would get a leaf lose a leaf get a leaf lose a leaf and they were starting to look you know crispy 
cardboardy, not cute. You know, they just wasn't cute anymore. So I was really not feeling this plan at all for a while. And I was almost gonna throw it out. <laughs> and then I said, you know what? I'm gonna put it in pawn and see if it does something. Because what I noticed, I'm just trying to pull off this. Okay, I'll do it later. What I noticed with alocasias is they don't like to dry all the way out. So for that reason, I thought, okay, I think Pond is gonna work well for it in a closed container because then it won't dry all the way. Oh my gosh, my corn, is it doing something? It is. Oh, sorry, I just got distracted. Oh my gosh. Okay, I just jacked it up, but it's still okay. This, when I repotted this <laughs> from uh, soil to pond, I saw that it had like four corms. And so I forgot that I put corms in here until I just saw that this one was poking out. Anyway, sorry, I just got distracted. Um, I wasn't watering it often enough. So it was drying out and it wasn't happy with me even though it was getting humidity. So I put it in pond. It was able to stay moist in the pond because it always has a reservoir here at the bottom. If you can see the water at the bottom there. So it does have a drain hole here in case I need to flush it. But I would say probably one to two weeks after I changed this over to pond, this beautiful leaf came out amazing. And the roots are looking really good on this plant. Like it's really happy. It's very, is it over here? Oh no, it's over here, sorry. <laughs> it's very happy. And like I mentioned, there's a corm in there that is also forming some roots. So it's happier because it's staying moist. So that's an example of a soil transition. And what I found too, why I like pond also is if you have a plant that likes to stay moist, it's good. If you have a plant that likes to dry all the way out, you can work with that as well, you know, with pond. If you have like a, um, you could water it like normal, like with soil. You don't have to use a reservoir for it. So you can still use it that way. The plant can still choose to dry out if it wants, or you can use the tray where it stays pretty dry, but it's only you know moist at the bottom and takes up only as it needs. So there's different circumstances you can put the pond, the pond, the plant in. If you have a plant that does like to dry all the way out, you might want to use a tray situation and just put it in the tray to bottom water as needed. Another situation is my crystallinum and if you guys remember which you might not because it was a while ago that i got this plant as a gift um i ordered a gloriosum and there was a little issue with the shipping i'll insert the video up here if you haven't seen the unboxing of that that was a long time ago but i had this this one leaf she sent me a one leaf rooted cutting it was very well rooted and I didn't get the pond immediately, so I just had it sitting in water, and then I was afraid to pot it in pond. So I probably had this crystalline with this one leaf. This is the original leaf. You can see how tired it is. Um, it was in water probably for probably a month by the time I finally potted it. So this was one of the first plants that I potted up into pond, my crystalline. And look at the roots on this baby. Hopefully I'm close enough and it's focused. It's very, very happy in pond. Very happy. Um, it, I don't have a lot of, this is the only anthurium I have. So I'm not gonna say what anthurium's like. <laughs> I'm only gonna say what this anthurium likes. <laughs> and this anthurium likes to stay a little bit moist. So right now it's in this situation with a tray, but when it's ready, I'm not gonna disturb it right now because it just put out these two beautiful leaves for me. This one got a little damaged on its way out because it was stuck on this leaf. But look how beautiful these leaves are. They're so happy too. And the, just the fact that this one is still hanging on, is uh, that's, that's an accomplishment with me. <laughs> so when it's ready to be repotted, it's not like crawling out the pot or anything. It can't crawl out the pot because I have a mesh down here anyways, but once the roots really start busting out, I'll probably put it in a closed pot and with a drain hole like my black velvet instead of this tray situation because I do find I fill this tray often and maybe if it was in a closed container, it would not dry out so fast. So that's what I'm gonna do. But this was a water to pond and it's very happy, which I think would usually be the easiest because it's already used to having consistent moisture. And so now that you're adding airflow, of course it'll just take off. It did take a while for this plant to take off for me only because I didn't realize, in which I did know, but I didn't, it didn't like hit me to put 
the moss on the top it's like i knew that that people did that because it helped but until you have your own plant and your own experience and you see what the plant is doing and you think okay i see the plant doing this maybe it wants this then it clicks to you like oh that's why everybody does that but i always encourage people have your own experience and your own experimentations do not just do what other people do you can do what you want to do let me not tell you don't do <laughs> you can just follow other people and do what they do however when you have your own experience of just you know seeing how your plant is acting and saying okay let me try this and you see how the plant then reacts you learn so much more you know because i did know that people put moss on the top of their um anthuriums to keep them moist and it helps them grow but until i had experienced myself i said uh-huh that's why they do that you know and you just appreciate it more you have a good time you know in your planty experience so that's another situation one other situation i'll show you guys is like a rehab so I don't remember what video I talked about this cordylin in, but <laughs> it's a cordylin. <laughs> but it's coming back. Look at that. It took a while, but it is coming back. And I, I have learned a lot with this plant as well. I don't see <clears throat> roots busting out anywhere or coming out through the substrate, but just the fact that this plant here, so this stump, I don't know what you want to call this. I unpotted it out of a huge plant. It had four cordylins in it and it just died out over the summer. I chopped it all the way back. I was gonna throw it out, but when I unpotted it, I saw that the roots had new white growth, white roots, new growth at the tips. So I was like, oh, okay, so it's still alive. So I said, let me put it in pond, give it some moisture, see how it does. But again, I was only watering it in the reservoir and not in the top but it still survived it took a long time though but it still it it just started putting out these new little leaves here so it's still alive now i'm interested to unpot this editing lauren here again <laughs> but as you can see in this photo here i recently unpotted the cordelin and i guess it's a little pup that came off off the side of that stump there because when I unpotted it, that little plant there was not really attached to the stump. I kind of like gently separated the roots and everything and it just came apart. It didn't rip apart. It didn't tear. It was just doing its own thing, but it was right next to the stump. So I'm assuming it is still a cordelin. It's just a little pup that came up off the side. And hopefully I inserted the photo there where you can see it became this cute little plant. So I repotted it on its own and it's really cute now. So yeah, sorry. Continue and see like how this plant is coming up like is it coming off this plant is it it seems like it's attached to this and just what is the anatomy going on under there so I was able to rescue this plant with um with pond so that's another situation but like i said if you're doing some type of propagation or rescue situation water it through the top to make sure it gets all the moisture it needs because this will dry out like dry to the bone dry out <laughs> and unless your plant likes that it may or may not survive so that was a successful one but i do have a fail <laughs> And I don't know if it's an official fail, but I did give up on it, I'm not gonna lie. Once I saw that the other cordylin was doing fine, I gave up on this one because I didn't wanna keep wasting my liquid dirt water, you know? So I stopped feeding this one. I stopped, um, I need to just unpot it and rinse this pond and save it and reuse it. But I'm pretty... <laughs> <laughs> I went to move it to see and the whole thing bit is dead. It's a done data. That is not that's not even funny okay it's official it's dead it's done like did y'all <sighs> so there there's my fail i said i wasn't sure there's my fail that rescue was a fail so yeah i think that's everything let me think before i end this video is there anything else i want to tell y'all about pawn because i'm gonna watch it back later and be like oh my god i didn't tell them this so just to let you guys know what I use to fertilize my plants in pond, I'll just insert it on the screen either way. I use liquid dirt, by which I have pretty much finished at this point and I probably will not repurchase at this time, not because I don't like it, just because I like to try new things. And I'm now using 
Jack's Houseplant Special. So that's what I've been using, but I have been using it at an even more diluted rate that it recommends. I personally like to use liquid fertilizer in addition to my pond substrate because I just want to give it a little more of a boost um, and I like to see things grow faster and I'm sure once spring comes it'll kick up anyways and I say comes because over here it hasn't come yet but um, I like to give it a little more help. So the houseplant special is actually quite strong so that's why I've dil diluted it twice and yeah so far i do like it i have not had any situations where plants seem to be over fertilized or burned by it but again i just said i diluted it like two times so yeah i would say if you're using ponds to find an easy um water soluble for liquid fertilizer to add to it of course you could just mix in some extra slow release fertilizer you could do that as well if you want any more information about all the different types of fertilizer i will link up in the cards my video about fertilizer because there's all kinds that you can use um, if it comes to pond specifically like I said you can do you can just add more slow release to it or you can um, use a liquid fertilizer so yeah that is everything on my info about pond my updates on plants and pond I do have some other plants I this is not really like anything but I'll if I am able to do this before I put the video out and edit it my poor Friday it needs to be in pond for the very same reason that my um, black velvet is in pond it's not happy with me because I'm not keeping up with it in soil so I'm hoping to bring this plant back I'm showing it to you guys now <laughs> and hopefully I'll be showing you an update of it thriving and giving me several leaves before um, I let it die off. I don't want it to die off, but I just haven't had the time to repot it into pond. So that's what I'm going to do. I know I've showed you guys a lot of smaller plants. Please do not think that you cannot plant up large plants in pond. You absolutely can. Um, there is a plant tuber, Roots Ready. He has a great channel. I'll put the little screenshot on here. He has large plants in pond and his plants look great, his larger plants. I haven't done it because I'm cheap and I'm not putting that much pond in one pot. So <laughs> that's why I haven't done it. I will do LECA, um, so they're larger, it'll take up, you know, I can use less LECA than I would pond. So that's the only reason why I don't have large plants in pond. So please do not think that you can't put large plants in pond, you can, okay? If you have any further questions or anything that I didn't address in this video, please feel free to comment and comment in the, so leave your question in the comments below, gosh. <laughs> but thank you again for watching. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. If you like the video, please press the like button. If you don't follow me on Instagram, please follow me on Instagram and have a good night.